Moving on to the second question. This one is a financial mathematics question. So a lot of very, very exciting words are going to be there. You need to know your story when it comes to finance. It's very, very important for you to understand the following. When you are dealing with financial mathematics, compound growth is compound growth. Simple growth is simple growth. Annuities are annuities. When you're, doing, when you're dealing with simple growth and compound growth, you normally have a single amount that somebody deposits into some bank. And that amount grows on its own for a certain number of years, right? But if you are told that someone is doing multiple deposits or multiple repayments, once you get the sense that in that particular question, there's an ongoing repetition of deposits of amounts into the same account, then we are talking about an annuity. Because you guys have a tendency of confusing the two. Compound growth is a single amount. We drop it there and then we go home. It grows on its own. But for this one, for annuities, it has to be continuous and repeated. You have to get that sense for you to be able to use the annuity for me this. Right. So let's go to the first question. A motor car cons, con, uh, con, or costing, ooh, the English. A motor car costing 230,000 depreciates at the rate of 8% per annum on the reducing balance method. Calculate how long it will take for the car to depreciate to half of its original value. Now, depreciation is a pain question. I always call them pain questions. So a depreciation story is a pain question, right? So let's go and see what we know and what we are looking for. So we are being told that this car costs 230,000, right? depreciates at the rate of 8% per annum. Now, that means our I is going to be 8%, which is simply 0 0.08 in decimals. All right. Now, they're saying on reducing balance method. When anybody says on reducing balance method, what does that mean? Well, that simply means that you're going to use the compound depreciation formula, which is 1 minus I to the power of N. Remember, there's the other one that says A equals to P into 1 minus I times N. But you only use this one if they said straight line method. So we're not going to use this one. They said reducing balance method. So we have to pick the one that I'm currently looking at now. All right. Okay. And then the statement goes on. They say calculate how long. Calculate how long. When you say calculate how long you're looking for the N value, right? It will take for this thing to depreciate to half of its original value. Half of its initial value. Now, at this point, I don't even need to know what the initial value was. And I'm going to ignore that 230,000 that was given to us. You can use it. Your, pay is gonna, your P is going to be 230,000 and your A is going to be half of that. I don't even want to do it like that. I'm going to pretend like I didn't know what the original price was. So that in future, if you get a question where you are not given the principal amount, but there's a relationship between the principal amount and the accumulated or the accrued value, you can then be able to know how the math is going to look. So let's come back to this and think about it. We don't know, we know the amount originally was 230,000, but in future, it's going to be half of the original price. So I can say my P is X, and then in future, that will just amount to half of X. I just let my original price value to be X, if it's going to depreciate to half of its initial value, it means my A will then become half of X. The examiner is asking us to work out the value of N, so I'm going to substitute now. For A, I'm putting half X. For P, I'm putting X, and I've got 1 minus I to the power of N. But we do know what the interest is, remember? What is the interest? The interest is 0 0.8. So what I'm trying to show you here is you can do this if you don't know what the original price value is. But in our case, we know what the original price value is. In any way, if you simplify this, when you divide both sides by x, right? When you divide both sides by x, that x cancels out, and this x cancels out. So you don't really need to know what the original price value of this particular item was. All we know is that in future, it will be half of its original. But for the sake of this particular question, what we're simply going to do here is, I'll substitute the value 230,000, right? It's going to be my A value. So we know that the A value is going to be half of 230,000 equals to the principal amount is 230,000 into 1 minus 0 0.08 to the power of N, right? We are looking for the value of N. The stuff that I have on the right-hand side, I was just showing you that we didn't need to know what the price value was. 
but examiners are very sensitive people. They might penalize you for not using their 230,000 if they give it to you. So I'm just going to use it. When you divide both sides by 230,000, you still amount um, to a value of half is 1 minus 0 0.08, which you can uh, obviously subtract when you minus those two. You're simply going to get an answer of 0 0.92, right? to the power of n. We're looking for n, n is an exponent, so we're gonna have to introduce logs. So you log yourself in. You log yourself in, you've got log of half is log of 0 0.92 to the power of n. After logging in, you then download. So you can download the exponent. You first need to log in before you can download. So now I'm sitting with log of half is n, log of 0 0.92, you divide both sides by the log, your n simply comes out as log of half over the log of 0 0.92, okay? And then you just simply press this in your calculator. Of course, you can group them and have them as log of half with a base of 0 0.92. And then your answer is going to come out as something awesome. Let's go get the calculator. You have your calculator there. You either work out the one that has got a division on it or you can work out with, obviously, the one that I've just written down that is simply um, shift and then you push the log button, it gives you two boxes, and then on the box at the bottom, you've got 0 0.92, and then you go inside there, you've got 0 0.5, which is half. When you press this, you're getting 8.31 as the answer. So this is going to give us an answer of 8.31. That is our end value. We'll be getting an answer of 8.31. What was the question? Well, they just wanted to calculate how long it will take for the car to depreciate to half of its initial value. So that's like 8.31 years, which in months, you can write it as eight years, right? And then you take that 0 0.31, you multiply it by 12. It will tell you how many months this is going to be. Okay, so if you've got that 0 0.31, and then you multiply it by 12, it simply gives you three months. According to mine, out of this particular product, I'm guessing that the answer is going to just simply approximately three months. So this is basically uh, how you would work out the value of n in a question that is talking about depreciation. We're going to go back now. We are told that um, Rx is invested into a savings account which offers an interest rate of 7.5% uh, per annum compounded quarterly. After four years, a further 2x is deposited into this account. Um, Ten years after the initial deposit, there is 16.879.76 in the account. Determine the value of the initial deposit. The initial deposit is X. So this question is about a timeline, right? So we're going to need to draw a timeline and use a timeline to try and explain what is going on in this context, right? So if you look there, let's take the important information first. In fact, I'm going to ask you to allow me to delete this so that when I do my calculation, you guys will see what logic I'm actually engaging in this solution. So we've got the beginning of time at time T0. Right? We are told an unknown amount is deposited and invested in this random account. Right? And then we are told that this account offers an interest of 7.5%. Okay. Per annum compound, compounded quarterly. That's very important. After four years, now we need to go for a, as long as four years. We need to run this. It's going to run for four years. After four years, something else is going to happen. An extra 2x is deposited into this account. And then we're obviously going to work with the same interest because I didn't say the interest has changed. So throughout this particular question, the interest remains the same as 7.5%. And in decimals, that's going to be 0 0.075, okay? They said 7.5% per annum compounded quarterly. When they say compounded quarterly, we need to divide by 4. This is basically what our I is simply going to become. Once more, that's another pain question. Then it's very important for you to understand that these ones not investment of multiple uh, deposits. So we've got our interest, that's going to be 0 0.075 divided by 4 because they said compounded quarterly, okay? And then we're running for as long as 4 years. Now the examiner says after 4 years, an extra amount of 2x was deposited. At the end, right at the end of the investment, we have that amount of 16 point whatever, um, thousand rents in this account. We want to know what is the value of x. And remember, 10 years after the initial deposit, so at T10, we're ending up with that total amount. So you want to know what is the value of X. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to treat this as two different deposits. They are indeed, but I'll just work this one until the end, right? 
So if that amount grows on its own from where it is to the end, what would happen? Let's think about it. All right. What would happen if that amount grows on its own from where it is until uh, the end? What would happen is you would have x into 1 plus the interest, which is 0 0.075 divided by 4. Okay? I'll call this A1. So A1 is the amount x growing on its own until the end. To the power of how many years? It will grow for 10 years. Compounded quarterly, that's 10 times 4. Now, I'm going to the next one. The 2x variable, I want it to also grow on its own until the end. What does that mean? That means my A2 now is 2x, growing at the same interest of 0 0.075 compounded quarterly, but it's not going to grow for 10 years. From 4 to 10, that's going to be 6 years in total. So that's going to be 6 times 4 because they said compounded quarterly. Now, when you add A1 and A2, you're going to end up with that amount of 16,000 that they're telling us about. So A1 plus A2 will give us 16,879.76. So what I'm simply going to do is I'll just add the two and then try to figure out what the solution is going to be in this case. So obviously you're going to just work out what the value of the first one is going to be, what the value of the second one is going to be. And then after that, you just equate that to the sum of the two, which I wrote as 16,000. And then you're just simply solving for x in a simple linear equation. So I'm going to just delete this part so that we have space and we're not away from the question so that you guys can see what I'm doing here. So A1 is x into 1 plus 0 0.075 over 4 to the power of 40 plus A2 is 2x, okay, into 1 plus 0.075 over 4, 4, 6 times 4 which is going to give us a value of 24, right? Now, when you add all those two, they're going to give us that value that we have of 16,000, right? Now, if you look here on the left, you've got a common factor of x. So basically, uh, x into 1 plus 0 0.075 over 4 to the power of 40 plus 2 times 1 plus 0 0.075 over 4 to the power of 24, right? is just equal to um, that particular number we're looking at there, which is just 16,000 rents, okay? 16,879.76. Then the rest is just calculator's work. You divide both sides by that big bracket, you'll end up with an awesome answer. Let's just see what that answer is going to be. You can still work out those values that you guys are looking at now. Um, I've got 16,879.76. Uh, we're dividing it by that big bracket, that big bracket is 1 plus 0 0.075 um, compounded quarterly, that's over 4, don't forget those, and then you raise that to the power of 40, because we can see there's an exponent 40 there, and then you add with 2 times 1 plus 0 0.075 compounded quarterly, close bracket to the power of 24, and then if you press the equality sign in your calculator, you get an answer of x equals to 32.30. This is the amount that I'm ending up with. So it's 3,230 rands. That's the amount that was invested in this uh, particular account. Right. All right. And then um, I'll just take 3.5.3 uh, because we're actually going to take a short break after that particular question. I hope you guys can see what is going on here. Uh, I'm now looking at question 5.3. We're told that a loan of 27,000 is repaid over five years by means of equally monthly payments. That statement tells you equally monthly payments. Tells you that this thing is continuous and is repeated. There's a repetition of this deposit. That means it's going to definitely be an annuity. That's an annuity question, okay? Right. So now they're saying it's a loan. It's a loan. And in this loan, these people are basically depositing an amount on a monthly basis. Starting one month after the loan was granted. Find... Uh, the monthly repayment if the interest on the loan is 9% per annum compounded monthly. Okay, so what's going on here? Let's just put in the data quickly. They said it's a loan, okay? All right, so we definitely know if it's a loan, somebody owes somebody else. So the amount of money we are basically borrowing is available now. So this will definitely be a present value situation. This is basically going to be a present value situation, which means we're going to use the PV formula, okay? So these are the attributes of working with the present value. 
Now, the examiner gave us a couple of uh, information. First of all, they said this is running for five years, and then they said the interest is 9%, so that basically means 0 0.09. But they said 9% per annum compounded monthly. So if they say compounded monthly, you need to divide this by 12, and you need to multiply your five years by 12. The amount of the loan that was borrowed was 27,000 rents, so we still have 27,000 rents here, okay? So we are looking for the value of X. Now, what do I normally encourage my learners to do? I just tell them, put the formula first. You've got P is X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N divided by I. We're looking for the value of X. So if you're looking for X, just cross multiply the I to give yourself pi and then divide by the bracket. So when I cross multiply the I, I get pi. And then you divide by that big bracket, you're going to have over 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N is equal to X. This idea simplifies things for you because it assists you not to worry about overtyping. Because when you type in, you need to keep writing all the numbers without rounding them off. So 27,000 was borrowed. Remember they said the first payment is made in a month's time, which is the expected way of working with these things. The interest that we are basically paying back is 0 0.09. This is divided by 12. They said it's compounded monthly, everything over 1 minus. Then you've got 1 plus 0 0.09 all over 12 to the power of negative 5 times 12, which is going to definitely give you an answer of 60. Once you've got this, you then just push it in your calculator to try and figure out what the solution is going to be. Once you're done typing it, all right, 27,000, you multiply it by 0 0.09 compounded monthly, it's going to be over 12. Then you have 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.09. Remember, that's decimals. You can write it as a percent in your workings, your calculator knows how to work out a percentage. It does have a value of a percent somewhere on it. So to the power of negative 60, I'm ending up with an answer that says X has to be 560 rands, comma 48 cents. So this is what these people would need to pay on a monthly basis if they basically want to amortize this loan within the given period of time. But remember to amortize is to just finish paying back the loan.